Let's take a look at section 3.2, which deals with predicates and quantified statements, um, just as 3.1 did. Um, here, we begin by looking at this quantified statement, this universal statement, and thinking about the negation. And understanding how negations work with these quantifiers um, is a, a big part of what this section is about. So if we negate this universal statement, notice the universal quantifier is replaced with the existential quantifier. So we begin with for all x and d, q of x, and the negation becomes there is an x in d such that not q of x. Let's look at an example. So what this says is for all integers n, okay, for all n for all n in the set of integers, n over 2 is in the set of integers. Which, by the way, is false. The negation of that would say there exists an n in the integer such that n over 2 is not in the set of integers. Okay. Now, if we want to look at the negation of an existential statement, it works in a very similar way. The uh, existential quantifier that we start with is going to be replaced with the universal quantifier in the negation. So we begin with there exists x in d such that q of x and its negation is for all x in d not q of x. Again, let's look at an example there exists x in the set of real numbers such that x squared plus 1 equals 0. The negation of that, which by the way, the, the statement we began with is a false statement. Uh, the negation would be for all x in R, x squared plus 1 is not equal to 0. Okay, now, well, another thing we talked about in section 3.1 is uh, the universal conditional statement, something we originally talked about in chapter 1 a little bit, that first section in chapter 1, uh, but now since we're learning about quantifiers, we have a way of symbolically uh, writing out these universal statements in general, and in this uh, particular case a universal conditional statement. Um, and remember with conditional statements, when we first saw those in chapter 2, we talked about some related statements uh, known as the converse, the inverse, contrapositive. And those are going to work very much the same way as we saw in chapter 2, except now we have this quantifier uh, making it a universal conditional statement. So the converse would be, the, uh, um, let's start with the original. Uh, the original is for all x and d, if p of x, then q of x. The converse is for all x and d, if q of x, then p of x. The inverse, for all x and d, if not p of x, then not q of x. And the contrapositive for all x and d, if not q of x, then not p of x. Okay, so these all work the same way that we talked about converse, inverse, and contrapositive in chapter 2. Uh, let's also talk about the negation. Uh, you may remember in chapter 2, I talked about how the negation tends to be something that students find a little bit tricky uh, when you talk about negation of a conditional statement because your first instinct might be, well, the the negation is going to be a conditional statement as well, and that's not the case. So the negation here, it's a negation, so we switch from 
universal to existential, but also when we negate the conditional part of that, it becomes a conjunction, it becomes an and. So we've got there exists x and d such that p of x and not q of x. Okay, we're going to look at a specific example. So this says for all x in the set consisting of 1, 2, and 3, if x equals 4, then x is less than 0. Now, I'm going to use this to talk about converse, inverse, contrapositive negation, but let's also use this to talk about a concept that was also first introduced in Chapter 2 when we saw conditional statements, and that is statements that are vacuously true or true by default. This statement for all x in the set 1, 2, and 3, if x equals 4, then x is less than 0, is a true statement. It's vacuously true because there are no elements equal to 4. And so the conditional part, remember the, the hypothesis part of the, the conditional, the if part, if that's false, then the conditional is automatically true. Okay, so as I wrote there, note that this is vacuously true or true by default. This is because none of the elements in the given set is equal to 4. Okay, now the converse is going to be for all x in the set one uh, consisting of 1, 2, and 3. If x is less than 0, then x is equal to 4. So we just switch the p of x and q of x around. Inverse, we see there for all x in that set. If x is not equal to 4, then x is greater than or equal to 0. Uh, notice that one is true as well. It's not vacuously true because there are elements, or actually all of the elements, are not equal to 4. Um, so we're not dealing with the same you know, vacuously true concept that we see in the original and in the converse. And the contrapositive says for all x in that set, if x is greater than or equal to 0, then x is not equal to 4. Also true. The negation says there exists an x in that set such that x equals 4 and x is greater than or equal to 0. But that's false. Okay, so that wraps up this particular video. Um, the next section gets into statements with multiple quantifiers, so we're going to want to see things like you know, how, uh, how do you have a statement that has both the universal and existential quantifier? And we'll, one thing we'll discuss in that section is how the order of those two things makes a difference in the meaning of the statement. Um, so that's an interesting topic, and we'll see that in the next video. I hope you found this one helpful.